The other application for the virtual GPU is, of course, gaming. Almost every single technology that we create seems to have, at some level, an influence on video gaming. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be amazing? If it's possible for us now to stream and to serve video games, incredible video games, from the cloud. Instead of the application that you saw Grady do earlier, Nuke and uh, Maya, wouldn't that be fantastic if those applications were, in fact, video games? It would be possible for us to literally host the video games in a server in the cloud and stream that video game instantaneously to any device anywhere. Now, the benefit of putting the video games in, in the cloud is can't possibly be overstated, just as other mediums. When it becomes more convenient, that particular medium becomes much more accessed. This is an illustration using video. There's about, 20, about $50 billion worth of global revenues around DVD sales and Blu-ray sales. However, those same movies streamed from cable represents a substantially larger market. And the reason for that is because it's just more convenient. Convenience is one of the best ways to grow a market. We hope that the work that we're doing here with cloud gaming could do the same. Today, we're announcing a brand new technology. This is a technology based on the Kepler virtual GPU, based on the Kepler cloud GPU. We call it GeForce Grid. Our vision, and it will take some time for this vision to come true, our vision is that one of these days, one of these days, any device, any device would be a device that hosts, any device that hosts and streams a fantastic video game. That this video game experience would no longer reside in just the devices within the room, but it would fall away and effectively become a supercomputer in the cloud. GeForce Grid, utilizing the technologies that I've, I've shown you so far, but in a video game environment. Now, of course, all of this sounds fantastic, and it sounds like a dream come true if it happened. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be terrific if cars could fly? The problem that we had to solve, the problem that we have to solve is that in the final analysis, that server is not here. It is somewhere out in the cloud. It is oftentimes miles and miles and miles away, and there is this small matter of speed of light. Now, here's the problem. <clears throat> Gamers call it game input lag. It's measured in milliseconds. This is what a game console looks like. And now I've put it in the context with a few things you might recognize. A pro athlete has a response time, reaction time of about 50 milliseconds. A major league baseball, when thrown, takes about 400 milliseconds to cross the plate. An average human's response time is about 200 milliseconds. A video game, from the point that you touch the buttons, press the button, to the moment that the scene changes, that the computer graphics response is about 160 milliseconds. That 160 milliseconds, some of it is within the game console, some of it is within the television. The problem is if we were to put that game console in the cloud, if we were to put that game console in the cloud, we would have to take that frame, encode it, stream it as video, have it travel over the internet, eventually show up over our Wi-Fi into our decoder, whether it's a set-top box or some kind, of, some kind of a local decoder, and put it back up on the screen. By that time frame, the lag is so long, you just simply don't feel like that game is interactive anymore. You could almost see the punch coming. And so that's the problem we have to solve. With the GeForce Grid, with the GeForce Grid, the virtualized GPU technology, the ultra-low latency remote display technology, and all of the work that we've done in system software, we've been able to reduce the input lag down to essentially the same level as that of a game console. To help me illustrate that, I'd like to welcome you, I'd like to welcome a veteran of the computer graphics and the veteran of the computer gaming industry. This gentleman has been working on computer games since he was 15 years old. He's a lot older than 15 now. He was able to drive here by himself. 
since he was 15 years old. He started a company called Shiny Entertainment after making many, many games. He's worked on some 100, 100 games and 29 game consoles. Very few developers in the history has ever worked on 29 different game platforms. Started a company called Shiny Entertainment. You guys might have seen his video game. It's a really cool game. The, the idea is fantastic. He starts his company called Shiny Entertainment. He says to himself, self, wouldn't it be great if there was a little worm? And this worm would become a soldier. It would find some suit and it would go to the battle, okay? Earthworm Jim ends up selling millions and millions and millions of titles. Uh, Atari buys Shiny Entertainment. He became the president of Atari. At some point, he had a big reveal. And so with that, why don't you welcome Dave Perry, the CEO and co-founder of Gaikai. <laughs> hey, buddy, hey. how's it going? Very good, how are Great you? Great to see you. Thank so, you for inviting so what was the So what was the moment? Tell us about that moment. You're, you're sitting here writing video games. You, got, you worked on 29 game consoles. You worked on some really goofy ones like the... Yeah. Uh, I, I won't say it. Or some, really cool, <laughs> some really cool ones. And, and the, the really best ones, of course, you worked on GeForce as well. But, but <laughs> tell me about what was that moment in 2008, 2009 that caused you to start Gaikai? I think what happened is we were getting really jealous of the movie industry and the music industry because they're just everywhere. And you know, you bring out your big blockbuster movie, every set-top box is compatible, every tablet, every device that's out there is, is supporting getting their, um, sort of their entertainment to the mass market. And the game industry just doesn't have that. We have consoles, which is great, but, um, but you know, we're responsible as an industry. Uh, Call of Duty was the biggest entertainment launch in history. And to have something that big. I mean, you guys heard the biggest entertainment launch in history, including movies and videos. Yeah, the biggest name one. Everything. It was $400 million. Broadway in, shows, everything. In 24 hours. And that was done without the support of all the people who distribute entertainment. And so the question is, is if we could, if we could sort of make this crazy idea work, could we get games, mm -hmm. the best games that the game industry can really make in front of that you know, massive audience? You guys, you guys, all the game developers would create a great game, and yeah. that in itself is really hard to do. It's really hard. Right? To, great, to build a great game that people love to play, that's beautiful, that technologically is engaging, and, and, and like, now after that, you've got to port it from platform to platform to platform, and the porting process is not, is not easy. I mean, they're different computers. Yeah, can you imagine right? making a movie and it only working on one specific brand of television or something like that? It would be, that's right. it would be a crazy idea, and yet that's something we put up with. Mm -hmm. it, it's funny because for a moment they had that big fight over Blu-ray versus HD DVD. And that was like only two that, formats. That was Great like crazy, deal. Right. Uh, but we deal with the that 29 every day. formats. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, uh, so what were the obstacles that, that you had to overcome to realize this vision? You got this, wow, wouldn't it be great? Yeah. You had the wouldn't it be great moment. Yeah, of getting this game out and, and just well, we assumed, work on any device. We assumed there would be lots of help out there. So we kind of, I started calling all the tier one network providers going, so you know, what can you do to help? And they, they hadn't really studied the latency around their data centers, for example. And um, we also had to solve uh, video compression problems. And so there was no really clear winner. We had to then try every compression algorithm. We tried switching compression algorithms on the fly. But the, the net result was, I think probably the hardest part at that time was how are we really going to solve this data center issue once and for all? Because there was, we went to Akamai and we went to Amazon and we went to everybody going, can you please help us? But for this, the responsiveness that we need, we have to get those servers so close. So the data center that we have in Sunnyville is five milliseconds from here. Mm -hmm. That's good enough. Now yeah. we're happy. Five milliseconds five is milliseconds. awesome. And so how do we give that experience to everyone in the world? And mm -hmm. so that's what we've been doing is we've been setting up data centers all over the world. We're now serving 88 countries um, at, at you know, incredibly low latency. And, and so as we add more and more data centers, you'll, you'll see the spreading and the, 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 sort of the quality of the experience will now, just keep increasing. We've been working together now for several years. Yeah. And our goal is to create a data center with GeForce Grid that makes it possible to deliver a very, very, very low latency experience, but also to provide 
the data center to scale out because we hope to have a whole lot of users. Exactly. Right? We hope yeah. to have users on mobile devices, on iPads and iPhones, on TVs, on PCs, on Macs. It doesn't really matter what these devices are, right? And cable set-top boxes, whatever they happen to be. And we were, so we're hoping for a lot of customers. And if that's the case, we need these data centers to be able to scale out and provide the service in a cost-effective way. Right? High performance and cost effectively. Yeah, I was. I have to say, just on the record, when we first met and discussed this this idea, um, at the time, the, the concept of of doing this was was kind of a lot of people on record saying this is impossible, it's crazy. That's and I right. remember you saying to me at the time, whatever's good for the gamers is good for Nvidia, and and so we're going to get behind this mm -hmm. and support it. And your team has been incredible, and the amount of energy and passion they've put into this mm -hmm. has been incredible. And so we've made advances that that people just didn't assume would have been possible because they didn't assume that NVIDIA would get behind this um, as strongly as they have. Well, let's show people so what we, we did. Show. We should look. We're going to go on this side. I think yeah. Clay's going to come out. Clay, don't trip on my jacket. Yeah, we're gonna have someone come and do a demo. Where are you, Clay? There we Ooh. go. Ooh. All right. Put that. Don't don't trip. So yeah, we'll, and we got we'll, Clay on this side. We got we got Andrew on that side. And um, first, let's just set things up a little bit. Uh, the reason why we we put things on two sides is we didn't want you to think that they were driven off the same computer. But the important thing to realize is that that uh, Andrew is on TV, and um, uh, Clay over here is on a Transformer Prime now. Now, Dave, tell us what we're about to see. So, so basically, there's, there's a new game. Um, we kind of want to associate it with really great games. We, we, we're not looking for sort of simple little flash games or something. We want the best that the game industry can make. There's a new game that's coming out. It's going to be beta 12.12.12, so this December. Um, it's called Hawken. And so what we've done is we're, we're streaming Hawken from the cloud. And here it's going to come to the Transformer Prime. And you can just see the quality. Um, if you launch that. So let me see if I understand. You're, you want, instead of, instead of using last generation games or casual games, cloud, cloud gaming is about next generation games. It is. It's, it's about the best that the industry has yet to even reveal. Yeah, we're going to kind of challenge the designers. Mm -hmm. You know, These are new tools that we're putting into your toolbox. You're going to be able to place these video games everywhere. And it's not just hardware and devices, it's also um, a, big, a big focus of ours was websites. So we can also put these directly on the web. We signed a deal with Walmart, so the only way to place you know, full state-of-the-art games on walmart.com is through us, Best Buy, YouTube, and we continue. We just I go Facebook. to walmart.com. Yeah. I click, and I'm playing the game. And you can play the game instantly right on the Crazy. site. And so by adding more and more, uh, I guess my point is, to some extent, I think we're going to beat Hollywood in reach, because we now have games running in Facebook, and, yeah. and so there's no Netflix in Facebook, yeah. for example. Now, one of the benefits that, that you haven't mentioned that we haven't talked about yet is the benefits to the game developers, right? I mean, not only do, not only do they prevent from having to port from t platform to platform, DRM comes with it automatically. Yeah. Because exactly. there's no, 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 no uh, possibility of their application being somehow uh, stolen because it never left the server. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's all they're getting actually from us is the experience. They get no code at any time. Right. And so that's something we've been working on a lot is, is trying to get people to start thinking about using cloud gaming to do trials and, and to, to, to get, your, get your audience more involved much earlier on mm -hmm. in the process. Because if you can get them involved, you know, without them having to sit there and download for 40 minutes or something like that, that would be really great. That's fantastic. They, you, the, the software developers don't want the bits to go out, nor neither do, does an end user want the bits. No. They just want the experience. All right, show us the experience. So this is running, uh, this is actually an, uh, this uh, Asus um, Prime tablet running Hawken, which is this new game. Again, it's made by a team called Adhesive Games. And um, it's, it's one of these games that you just know gamers are going to get very excited about, but they didn't dream they were going to be able to just pull out their tablet and drop into a multiplayer world like this. And so this is also um, over. So this is playing. This is this. Your Clay is playing on a transformer. Yes. Yep. Transformer Prime projected up into what is an Ultra HD projector, and on the other side, Clay is back there. He's standing. Clay. Clay is that curly head guy on the other side, and uh, he's standing in front of a television playing against Clay. Yeah, so what we're expecting to happen here is imagine you discovered this game. It came out at 9 a.m. this morning. It's still 9 a.m. 
you've already started to play because it's within one minute you're playing. Right. And then you tweet to your friends, oh my God, it's amazing, join me. They can then click a button. They've not heard of the product. They don't know where to go get it but they're instantly in it, in their browser, and, and then they're immediately able to, to teleport in and join their friends in the, yeah, in the universe. Yeah, this is fantastic. So imagine beaming all your friends into your game the, the minute it comes out, and yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing fantastic. that this enables. What is more fun than a mech first-person shooter? Absolutely. Right? <laughs> what is more fun this than game, a mech? Oh, this is going to be isn't awesome. Isn't it gorgeous, the, 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 the quality? This is the kind of stuff that we are so excited, because as you put more and more compute in the cloud, mm -hmm. It's going to, we're going to keep going back to the developers going, no, 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 crank it even higher. We can That's put, right. put the game on let's, maximum Let's walk settings. over here. I mean, one of the things that, that, that you just said that I don't know if the audience picked up is that, in fact, because it's in the cloud and because we're always building out the cloud, mm -hmm. you always have the state-of-the-art technology in the cloud, and it's possible then to never be static. I mean, you're, the, the, the technology is literally getting better every single day. Absolutely. Right? Instead of, instead of a game console um, or a, a hardware platform that on the day that you buy it starts to get lesser and less good, yeah. in this particular case, the cloud gets better and better every day. That's yes. one of the powers of cloud computing. No, exactly. So when a game launches, yeah. we can send it to the very, very latest hardware. And this is kind of fun to see because we announced um, a deal with LG at CES this year where we're going to power their cloud gaming platform. And um, it means that now the television companies can participate in the game industry. Before, they were just passive. I kind of always joke, how much money did Microsoft make when people played Xboxes on your TVs? And the answer is billions of dollars. So how much did you make? And the answer has always been zero. But now they're able to have their own cloud gaming platforms on their wow. TVs. Now this particular, just so that you guys see, you guys know what this game console looks like. Here, come back here, Mr. Camera. Yeah, that green cable. This is your <laughs> game console. Yeah, there's n nothing else needed other than a is green cable. Is this awesome? And, and it's, it's green. Uh, of course, you got a little, a little NVIDIA. All like. right, all right. <laughs> David, thank no, you very much. Thank you very you much. You guys are going to be incredibly successful. We're having a lot of fun. Congratulations. Thank you, you very thank much. Thank you. Um, I want to. I want to thank. I want to thank all of our partners um, that are going to support us in go. the cloud yeah. GPU ecosystem. This is. Um, it, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Clay. You can pick it up later, man. <clears throat> All right, so, so I want to thank all of, all of our partners uh, who are part of the cloud GPU ecosystem. On the enterprise side, Citrix, Citrix Microsoft, VMware, and Zen. And on the cloud gaming service side, Gaikai, G Cluster, Playcast, Otoy, and Ubitus. Um, there, many, of them, many of them have booths uh, here at, um, uh, at, the, at the GTC show. Please do stop by and see them. They're doing incredibly great work. This is really, really fabulous. I want to also thank all of the system companies that have built dedicated servers, dedicated servers for VGX, so that we can take the VGX platform as broadly as possible, and enable GPU accelerated VDI everywhere around the world. I want to thank Dell and Cisco and HP, IBM, and Supermicro for being part of our ecosystem. Well, that's it. Kepler is, <laughs> thank you. Kepler is a very, very big deal for our company. Not only is it a revolutionary processor, the best that we have ever built, uh, it will take computer graphics to the next level, as you've seen. It will take GPU accelerated computing to the next level. And then for the very first time, it would put GPU into the cloud. It is surely the case that computer graphics and GPUs are becoming more and more important. And our endeavor is to bring this capability to as many experiences as possible. With computer graphics, we were able to reach hundreds of millions of users. With computing, we're able to affect and be your partner as you discover more and more important science. And with cloud computing, we can literally put the power of the GPU in the hands of billions of mobile users around the world. I want to thank all of you for coming today. Have a great GTC.